Okay. Hello, everybody. Good morning, for and thanks for joining us for this IFI event. Uh, today, I'll be joined with Anjali. She is also director of IFI. So I just want to introduce myself, talk about a little bit of IFI. So my name is Ashish Bhatia. I am the VP of IFI. Anjali, I'm accompanied by Anjali. She is director of IFI. Um, we host such events regularly just to make sure that we are able to provide the value to all our members. Uh, so please feel free to let us know if there's any specific topic you want to hear from us. There are tons of resources on the website as well. So please access those. Um, you know, there are mentorship programs on the website. There are job boards. There are different events information, a lot of old PPTs. So please feel free to access those and uh, give us feedback, what else we can add it there. Uh, and then I just want to also mention that, uh, you know, if you are, if your membership is lapsed or you have been, um, if, you're, if you're not been a you know, unpaid member, then please reach out to membership team, which is membership at itialumnicanada.com. Please reach out to them for renewing your membership and become a paid member. I mean, this is the value that we bring to our, all the members. So. This piece is helping us to <clears throat> events. So thank you all from that. I'm gonna hand it over to Pankaj, who is our president for the welcome address. Um, thank you. Pankaj. Thank you, Ashish. I'm sorry everyone for my get up. I'm just finishing the bike for brain health event. Welcome to this remarkable gathering. Our stay at IIT revolutionized the way we think, work, and live. Artificial intelligence has become an integral part of everything that we do today. It is influencing various aspects of our daily, life, our daily lives. Potential of AI seems to be boundless, and the future looks like promising, exciting, and inspiring. Today, let us seize this opportunity to connect, learn, and exchange ideas. Abraham will be giving a masterclass on strategies that a newcomer can take to settle in Canada, while Pranjal will unravel the use of chat GPT for resume building. Once again, I extend my warmest welcome to all of you. May this gathering be catalyst for inspiration, innovation, and forging meaningful connections that we all are looking for. Thank you for being part of IIT AC. I have two requests to make to you. Next week is the blood donation week. As you all know, IIT AC is the partner, uh, like life partner for Canadian Blood Services. Last week we did the blood donation drive in which we received, uh, we did 15 units of blood donation. Please do join the IIT AC team and donate the blood. And if you are having any issues to book an appointment or get an appointment, do let us know. We'll help you out. So make sure you do something uh, on that part. And as I asked, as Ashish mentioned, consider becoming paid member. Uh, paid, uh, like your membership fees is something that keeps the organization running. So I request you to consider becoming paid member. Thank you and uh, thank you everyone. Uh, looking forward to great insights from Abraham and Pranjal. IIT ka tempo hai hai. Thank you Ashish, over to you. Thanks Pankaj. And uh, you can go back to your racing. That's awesome. That you're doing two things at the same time. That's amazing. Thank I'm you, gonna you, uh, move to Anjali. She's our she's our co-host today. Over to you, Anjali. Thanks, Ashish. Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well on this Sunday morning with the beautiful weather outside. Uh, so in today's session, we have two speakers. The first session will go till 10.30 and then the second one will go till 10.55 a.m. Both the sessions include Q&A as well. Now, without further ado, let's begin our session today. I have the honor of introducing our first speaker, Pranjal Singh. Pranjal is an accomplished IIT AC member who brings an extensive experience knowledge and expertise to our session today. Pranjal is an experienced product manager with expertise in leading teams and projects. He has experience in creating product vision, 
strategy, uh, pricing plans, feature prioritization, content ingestion, and leading the transition from one-time purchase to subscription model. He is also skilled in product strategy, product development, project management, stakeholder management, and team leadership. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Pranjal Singh. We are excited to learn on using ChatGPT for building our resumes. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause to Pranjal Singh and over to you, Pranjal. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali, for the kindest in, uh, introduction. Um, and thank you, ITSC, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'll just share my screen and do let me know when my screen is visible. We can see it now. All right. Perfect. So um, I'll start my uh, conversation around how we can leverage chat GPT and uh, to create or upgrade our resumes. Um, if so, AI has been uh, there for quite some time, but uh, the buzz around AI has started with the uh, oncoming of chat GPT. Um, the simple answer to can this uh, chat GPT improve my resume is a simple yes. Um, what we would require individually would be uh, either our existing resume or a LinkedIn profile and or a job Sorry, description. Join the meeting. And a job description that we are uh, targeting. Now, uh, for this, we would you would need a chat GPT account. And of course, the the crux of the matter would be the ability to create prompts that uh, in English. And this is where uh, the everything around AI and chat GPT revolves. And we'll talk about that soon. So for creating a chat GPT account, you would need to head over to chat.openai.com. Um, and you would need your Microsoft account, Google account, or Apple account to create that, uh, create a chat GPT account, or you could use any other email. Um, just be aware that you would need to enter your phone number as well to create an account, which uh, since it's AI, it kind of is concerning, but that's something that we have to live with uh, to create that, that account. So what is a Prompt. A prompt is something uh, that you type into uh, the chat with chat GPT. It's something like a Google search, you enter the keywords, right? Um, but this is more natural language. So in simple terms, a prompt is like a question or a statement that is given to chat GPT to guide or direct its thoughts or actions. And uh, it is something that is designed to elicit a response or a specific type of behavior from chat GPT. Now, uh, this particular phrase that you see on your screen, I asked ChatGPT to do that for me, uh, and it gave me a very good starting point. So I uh, generated it using ChatGPT and then edited it myself for my personal uh, use so that it fits my uh, use perfectly. So the first thing about ChatGPT uh, is that it would give you a starting point. Uh, now. The second thing would be you could enhance your language, your formatting, and your error identification. Uh, instead of just that squiggly red line that we have in Microsoft Word at the moment, you could tailor your content uh, to specific jobs and job descriptions. Like we see on most of social media that we need to send out uh, spec uh, modified resume or specific to that particular job description. So in that scenario, it gets really, it, it's really time consuming uh, to make changes to your resume, to your cover letter, and then answer all those questions uh, that the process may entail. Uh, so you could do that using chat GPT and it gives you a very good starting point. You could just modify the content accordingly um, and then send it across. So it saves a lot of time. And it gives you a con confidence boost because you as a person would have uh, submitted the application knowing that uh, it's it has leveled up 10 times. So instead of uh, showing you things in presentation, I would like to go into ChatGPT itself. And 
so it kind of signed sign me out right now. Um, if you could sign up using those the uh, the process that I mentioned, I'll just sign in using my credentials. And the first thing that I would like to talk about is the chat that I had with chat GPT a while back. Um, and this was to improve my resume. So the first step is to identify where my resume is at. So um, I this is a so this is a prompt. This is what I type in. So you have to type in uh, at, uh, right at the bottom, uh, like in every messaging app. So I would tell chat GPT that you are a recruiter identify the profile for which the following resume is best suited for and then I would go ahead and uh, copy my entire resume and paste it right below that and hit send just make sure that you are not sending across your personal information for example your phone number or your uh, email address into the chats for chat GPT because these chats are being used by uh, chat GPT and the team behind that to train the model. So 100% privacy is not uh, expected and uh, claimed by them. So once I do that and I hit send, chat GPT tells me based on the provided resume, it is best suited for a product manager position, which is my current position right now. So it makes sense to have that. And it also gives me the reason the reasons why the this particular resume uh, is fit for that job. So like everyone else, my also next target is a senior level position, which would be a senior product manager's job. So I asked it to identify the gaps in the my resume for a product manager's job. And the important part here is to list them in order of most impact and then provide examples. So by doing this, Chat GPT uh, will provide me answers uh, or things to work on in a cer certain set of order, which makes a lot of sense. So first thing it mentioned is lack of senior level experience. So I would go back to my resume and look at what uh, what kind of experience I have and I could enter uh, in, in, in my resume. It would give me examples of that as well. So this gives a very good starting point and a very good uh, thought invoking process uh, to create your resume. So it would give me all those uh, examples. For example, no mention of stakeholder management and leadership experience, uh, limited exposure to market research and competitive analysis. Now, these two parts I've done in my current job and my pre previous jobs, but I have not mentioned in my resume. So these are probably things that I need to work upon. So what I did was I worked upon uh, these things, added a few lines, or modified my resume. And then in another chat with chat GPT, I did the same thing wherein I uh, told chat, chat GPT that you are a recruiter and identify the profile that it, this is best suited for. With all those modifications in there, I expected it to tell me for uh, is uh, to this profile to be best suited for a senior product manager, but I, it still gave me a product manager role because it's thinking of thinking in a broader level again then i asked for uh, the gaps like i did in the previous chat and it gave me uh, some different items like p and l and financial management so i could then iterate my uh, resume further to include all these aspects of senior product manager that will uh, be required for that particular role and that particular level so uh, this is how you iterate uh, your resume with chat GPT. Now, let's say, uh, I now this is a real life example. I got a call from Bell Canada and they were looking for uh, a senior product manager. Um, now, I did not have the JD at hand, so it was just a call. So I made down some notes um, and uh, they were looking for something uh, in next gen emergency services, climate disaster, uh, IoT, etc. So I had those keywords uh, written down. I went into chat GPT, asked them, you are a recruiter for Bell Canada. 
looking for a senior product manager. So you have to go into the details of things, which is where chat GPT will provide you the best kind of answers. So the so I went into the details by saying that the best match for the senior product manager's role has experience in these fields and a successful business candidate uh, is a business and a, uh, and a technical product manager as well. So, and then I asked uh, it that based on my profile, which is shared below, write down why I will be the best suited candidate and write this passage in first person. Otherwise, normally it's returning, it was returning in third person. So I just wanted a copy pasted answer. So I copied my profile. Um, I'll show you how I copied my profile. Um, so this is not my resume, this is my profile from uh, LinkedIn. So based on that, it gave me the entire thing. Like it took my, uh, took Bell Canada's position into account. Um, it talked about what I've done throughout my career. It talked about my current company. And then it talked about my last company as well. And then my background that will help me get this particular job, why I would be successful at the, this particular job. And then uh, it concluded the uh, passage uh, on a strong note. So what I did here was uh, for this particular uh, profile. So I went over to my LinkedIn profile. Let me show it to you. So I went over to my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I clicked on more and then save to PDF. So this would open up my profile uh, in a PDF manner. I just did a control A control C, which is uh, copying everything and head back to uh, chat GPT and pasted that right here. And of course, now this has my mobile number and my uh, email address. So I removed that part. So, and I sent, sent this across and I got, got a response from chat GPT. And this is a very good starting point to send a message across to a hiring manager or uh, even for a cover letter. So I could ask chat GPT to write me a cover letter as well, which I'll show you a little bit down the road. If we talk about uh, improving specific lines of a resume. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So this is my resume in its current form and I'm working. Uh, these are my, uh, things that I wanted to showcase in my resume. Now, when I started with chat GPT, I did not mention any of these figures that you see in bold. And of course, having numbers makes more sense and provides more credibility to what your claim is. So what I did was I copy pasted just these lines and asked chat GPT to add numbers to showcase impact of work to the following points for a resume for a product manager. And I pasted these lines. So you would see that this has just one figure, 50% right, right about here and no other figures. So chat GPT improved each and every point and mentioned the numbers against it. Now, I'm not saying that you use these numbers. What I'm saying is you for each and every point, you have the right metric that you need to look at. So you have the starting point. So you, uh, I want to showcase monthly active users. I could go into my reports and get the actual number. This is where the ethical scenario comes into being as well. So you have to be very aware of what you're writing in your resume. It has to be correct. Um, so for each and every point, for this particular point, it mentioned that I need to talk about average revenue per user, which is ARPU. Um, for some other point, it is customer lifetime value. For some other point, it is something else. So it gives you the correct metric that you need to look at for that point. Um, then I was just messing around with chat GPT. I was ask, trying to ask a salary question. It was being very diplomatic in providing the answers, but it gave me something really interesting that a recruiter would look uh, would like to hear. So it gave me that broad mindset uh, around uh, what I need to talk to the uh, recruiter about. And I, if I uh, talk to ChatGPT further in what and provide more clarity about what I have in my mind, uh, it would give me better answers. 
so the next thing uh what i did was now this is so, so uh, up until now i was showing you how to copy paste stuff into chat gpt with this uh you need not copy paste stuff into chat gpt so for example you are a recruiter for serid in canada this is a live job right now um and if you see serid in canada is looking for a senior product manager and the job description uh is provided below so i copy pasted this job description uh right about till the end right about here and i did this uh from linkedin so it should be so i basically went into jobs um just give it a moment and i could search for a particular job i could open up um any job let's say i think it was this one um if i open this job you have the about the job section and you have what you'll get to do about the opportunity and what's in it for you so copy all of this content and sorry yeah paste this in chat gpt so this is that exact content that i've used about the job description um and i asked chat gpt uh, to you know give suggestions to improve my resume for this role in order uh, of impact with examples now uh, i did not provide my entire linkedin profile i just gave it the link uh, to my linkedin profile and chat gpt mention what i need to do highlight relevant experience showcase user centricity and whatever things are required by that job and maybe uh, i may be missing in my uh, resume or my profile so this gives us that uh, again a starting point to my next level right now in many companies we have uh, cover letter that we need to send out we have to answer a lot of questions it it's i'll be honest nobody has uh, has said this to me before but i find it really time consuming and it's it's a pain to do so uh, for this particular job what i did was um i created uh, a cover letter so you are a, i wrote down you are a recruiter for serid in canada looking to hire a senior product manager so i'm providing context in every new chat you would have to provide new context uh, and otherwise it would just use the context of the uh, chat that's going on so based on my profile provided the link and the job description below create a cover letter that will get me shortlisted for an interview which is what we essentially want Pro copy pasted the entire job description and it mentions everything that i need to provide in my uh cover letter now you would see that it's uh showing uh, a traditional method you could obviously avoid that since it's all digital these days so you could have everything uh tailored to that job description and to your own job profile uh, like it's talking about my key strengths as well um it's talking about uh seridian as well say it it not only took information from the job description that i provided it went into seridian's database uh and uh looked into that and provided the unity diversity part as well which is crazy like uh, it uh, it would show if you send this out to a recruiter uh you would look like a candidate who has done their research so once you get a call you should be definitely be prepared it should not look like that you're entering this out of the blue it should not look like you're using chat gpt to do that but yes it since you know you've you're writing these things down you should know about these things by heart and talk about these things and be in that mindset as well so that's how uh we could use chat gpt to improve our linkedin profile and our resume and cover letters and those uh individual questions that we get um any questions uh from anyone please feel free to ask so uh hi hi pranjan 
thanks for doing this. I just wanted to highlight that um, I'm working for a company which is using chat GPT to integrate with products. And this is actually what we are doing in production uh, with the disclaimer that chat GPT is going to give you results, but you have to authenticate it kind of. I mean, sometimes it gives hallucinations or incorrect text. So just be aware like people, um, people on the call that um, just don't copy paste it from chat GPT directly. Just like, you know, knuckle ke liye bhi akal chahiye kind of thing. Exactly. That, that's very true, which is why uh, like if you see the metrics that it provided, none of these metrics are true. Uh, uh, that I asked for uh, it to improve my resume. Twenty, I did not have twenty-five percent increase in my monthly active users. I had five percent, so <laughs> I cannot use that. Uh, so yes, you have to be very mindful of what you're entering in your resume and your profile. And that's very true. Nakal kelia kal chahiye. So yeah, uh, be aware of that. Hi, Pranjal. Hello, sir. So, well, it's a wonderful presentation. And of course, it's something I learned today. I was not aware of it. A beautiful, beautiful presentation. I've got two questions. What chat GPT means? What GPT means? <laughs> um, first of all, thank you for uh, for your kind words. I am not sure what chat GPT is. I can, I can, but... I can answer. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, I can answer. So uh, GPT is basically uh, class of AI models, machine learning models, which are trained on uh, language, like English, uh, English language. So th these are called large language models, LLMs. So their basic thing is they train, basically they learn the entire text on Wikipedia to some extent, and then they generate text for you. So uh, given some input, like what prompts uh, Pranjal was sharing, uh, chat GPT is basically a chatbot. It's a tool which will generate some text for you, but it knows the context. Mm -hmm. Context is when we are saying product manager, Ceridian, Bell. So based on that, it will give you some data. So, so that is like a very short description of what chat GPT is. And there are a lot of other like Google has barred. Uh, they're like very similar type of uh, uh, AI models. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, uh, GPT is generative, pre-trained. Pre-trained, transformer. Uh, transformer, yeah. Yes, yes. Good. So, Good. so these are basically class of natural language processing uh, models. Uh, it's a subdivision of AI. You have machine learning, you have NLP. So uh, these are that. And my second question, Pranjal, is uh, maybe it is too early. Is there any statistics with using the G chat GPT for resume? How much uh, success uh, people have got? I mean, is there any statistics for chat GPT resume versus standard resume? Uh, is there a good success story? Um, yeah. So if you look at uh, what recruiters are talking about on their social media platforms um, and how we compete against each other um, and how uh, ATS is being used to track these resumes and create uh, some sense out of these resumes for uh, the recruiters. They are real, uh, they, they mention uh, how they are getting good quality candidates uh, who are better prepared for the job um, for, uh, and they have used chat GPT in the process. So they're not looking at chat GPT from some, uh, as a, uh, as something that is hindering their, uh, pro uh, their hiring process. They're actually looking at it from a perspective that, uh, people are now using this tool to, uh, arm themselves better for the role at hand. And that makes, uh, that that's how they are getting better candidates and this is how uh, people are getting training themselves as well so you can uh, there can be scenarios where you can ask chat gpt to be a career coach and uh, uh, or or a recruiter in this case a recruiter uh, and then ask it uh, to list down certain set of questions that you would be 
getting in an interview for a particular company. So uh, that's how ChatGPT then uses and trains you for that particular job position. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I think we are on over time now, three minutes over time. So if you, if anyone has any questions, you feel free to share it over email and we'll get back to you. Thanks, Pranjal, sure. for sharing Thank you so how much. we can ease our workload for resume building <clears throat> and with the use of AI and then build uh, impactful resumes as well as the cover letters. This is really amazing. Thank you. And now I have the honor of introducing our second speaker, Abraham Samson. So Abraham G is an accomplished IIT AC member who brings an extensive experience in India, Israel, and in Canada. He has been in Canada for the last 19 years and has worked in purchasing, supply chain, quality management, and then headed compliance at a 2.4 billion retail company. He has a passion to mentor newcomers and help them in settling in this new country. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Abrahamji. We are excited to learn some tricks and trips for the newcomers to, to succeed. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause for Abraham Johnson. Over to you, Abrahamji. Thank you, uh, Anjali, and uh, good morning, uh, everybody. I uh, have a few questions uh, already. So I'm assuming that we have a few newcomers and uh, new immigrant IIT alumni in the audience. My approach here in the talk will be straight, honest, factual, original, giving examples, real life examples from my experience. You see, I'm not a recruiter nor a, nor a headhunter. I also was an immigrant like you, but I came here at a very late stage. I was 50 when I came and it was not an immigration by choice. We were well comfortable in India. You know, I was heading a company and good salary and, and uh, top management perks, tax shields, you know, which, which here you cannot dream of, you know. My wife was a partner in a family business. So, but my son who did his uh, graduation and did his uh, GMAT, he had a fairly high score and he wanted to do his MBA in either US or Canada. So my boss, BB, she said that let's not break the family, you know, let's all go. And that's how I came here and uh, success came quite fairly early. Uh, I got settled down very quickly and I'm going to share the tips. As I said, I will be giving real life examples from my experience over the past 19 years. And I could send my daughter to a private school from day one, but 20 minutes uh, to speak is uh, too short a time. So basically this is a, a very brief overview of tips for newcomers strategy for success. What is the aim? The aim is to settle down. What it means? It means that you get a job in your expertise, your field of expertise, expertise, expertise. You don't want a job as a salesman or a cashier in a store. So the tips that I'm going to share, I've categorized my talk into a few sections. And as I said, I'll be very honest uh, in this talk. The first section that I'm calling is general. I call it as a behavioral. Okay, A, <clears throat> you have to forget your Indian mannerisms when you are looking, when you are settled in Canada and looking for a job here. Example, no sir, no madam business. Here, everybody talks in the first name basis. Even if you are in a meeting with your president, you don't say uh, Gupta sir or sir. Or, you say, hi, John, first name basis, okay? B, be professional, never be personal. For example, you don't ask your colleague, are you married? At what price did you purchase your house? Absolutely no personal uh, talk uh, in, the, in your professional life. Of course, no politics. Today, as you know, you know, 
the big big investors you know vanguard and and blackrock and all these guys you know they are forcing some kind of an agenda uh, in various companies but you have to be not commenting on all this no politics third c we indians have a tendency to be loud i mean let's face it you know you go to a restaurant you go to a train talk softly second tendency that we have is to repeat ourselves we say something again we repeat it in the next minute no repetition clear articulation in your talk politeness is required in your talk for example if you are in a meeting you don't abruptly inter interrupt you have to say excuse me can i say something or if you are calling somebody don't pick up the phone and start uh, blabbering you say uh, uh, john can i do you have a few minutes to talk to me so politeness is another thing we have to learn while in canada d please don't uh, mind uh, my straight uh, shooting when you step out it's better to shower put some light deodorant uh, mouthwash you know why i'm saying this that indians asians filipinos chinese we tend to be a little smelly maybe because of garlic or spice i don't know but it's better to you know uh, use uh, take this precautions professional dress very important you can't go in a toronto maple leaf ball cap putting it ulta or you wearing a colorful t-shirt no professional dress is very important and you are being noticed no sneakers if possible portray confidence wherever you are even if you are a newcomer portray confidence whether you are in a professional gathering or a social gathering i'll give you a very classic example of myself i will be i'll be giving example as i talk when i was interviewed for my first job by the executive vice president how i came to that stage i will talk to you later but in the end of the interview he told me abraham how come you are speaking such good english confidently i told him a i not only speak good english but i speak good grammatical english so i was so confident of myself so this confidence has to be portrayed you know of course you have to be factual straight and honest by confidence what i mean you know you suppose you are in a meeting you don't sit in a corner as if it's a sheep you know going to be slaughtered you know try to participate uh, respectfully talk give your ideas g be honest because if you want to hide one lie you have to speak another lie develop the habit of honesty and factual uh, uh, speak lastly punctuality develop a habit of punctuality another example i'll give from my life you know i went once went for an interview and new to new to the place you know i could not uh, maneuver myself i was late the guy said uh, you're late by 20 minutes uh, you know be sorry we cannot see you so i learned the bitter lesson of being punctual no excuses given okay so these are the general behavioral behavioral traits uh, one has to learn the following points which i have made uh, i'll be giving a flow chart at the end of the uh, talk so the second and the third point that i have made second is called cold calling and the third is networking 75 to 80% of jobs today it is statistically proved are filled by this two via this two modes so it is very is important for you to master these strategies it's not a simple strategy it has to be mastered because when you uh, pass this hurdle then only you will be asked to send your resume or or come for a meeting so cold calling and and uh, networking okay cold calling do a research of the companies under the heading for example you have aerospace you have so many companies uh, fashion you know so there are websites industry canada canada.ca many industry many websites available you make a list of all the companies that you are targeting 
number one. Very easy to find out from the websites or LinkedIn or whatever. Against each company, this is what I did when I was in India because I didn't come here to immigrate by choice. I, as I told you, I did some research in India itself. Against each company, try to find out who are the key persons in that company in your field. LinkedIn is one of the best ways to find out. Or you have the company name, you have the uh, phone number, call the company, it will go to the front desk or it will go to the reception. As you know, privacy laws are very strong here. So if you tell uh, who is the head of marketing uh, in uh, Bell Canada, you just can't, he's not gonna, she's not gonna tell you. So what you, what the strategy that you have to employ is that uh, madam, uh, that uh, uh, I'm in the process, my name is uh, Ashok, I'm in the process of drafting a letter for a business proposal with a company in the field of product strategy or mark, whatever, marketing new products. So I would prefer that I address the person by name. Hence, I'm asking you the name of the person. 100% she will not only tell you the name of the person, but she'll also give you his email. His email. So, so you have the, what is, the, what is your aim in cold calling? Aim in cold calling is when you make a call, you make the call a success. You want to be called for a meeting. You want to be, be asked to send your details, your resume. That's the aim of this. So you have to approach step by step in a very um, scientific and systematic way. Caution here. After you make a call, never, never say to the person, I'm looking for a job. Do you have a vacancy? Finish, end of the game. No more. Never talk that you want a job. Never inquire for vacancy. What, what I would do, what I did many times is that, first begin with a greeting. You know the name. Good morning, John. This is a show. I'm, do you have three to five minutes time to talk to me? I do understand the value of your time. And I promise you, it will not be more than three minutes. See what he says. If he says yes, you have a golden chance of getting your foot in. Don't mess up. Very briefly, elevate a pitch. Talk about, I would talk like this, for example, you know. I'm a newcomer to Canada. This is, uh, I'm qualified in uh, aerospace engineering. I worked in uh, so and so company. This was uh, the last project I did. Now, I would like to know how this industry operates in Canada. I would like to know the trends. I want to seek some advice. And uh, I'm very keen to meet a stalwart and a veteran or an expert like you. If he says, please, he may say, Okay, send me your details or come for a meeting tomorrow. Good. Then you have a chance to go to the next step of impressing him. If he says no, don't give up. Show your enthusiasm and interest. You say, I understand and I respect uh, that, uh, that, I respect that. But is there any other better time or day that I can call you to talk to you? So he's, so you're not pushing him, you know? So you. You are uh, uh, trying to show your interest and enthusiasm. You'll, you'll get success, you know, in that case. One question is when you're talking to him, don't brag. Talk very simply about your achievements, your expertise, your professional qualifications, and what you have achieved. And that you basically, you want to learn more how this comp industry operates in Canada, what are the challenges, advice, you know. And then and that's how uh, uh, it goes from there. Okay, I, I'll give you some examples which I faced. When I was working for a company, we had a young uh, MBA who was a student, who was on a student visa. He was from Delhi. I didn't even know his name today. Saurabh Bhatia. I'm talking about 2006-07. He just finished his MBA and he, like cold calling, you know, he called our president and, and told him exactly. And in Delhi, you know, he was very smart, you know. So he said that I just finished my MBA and I want to get the feel of uh, industry, you know. I don't mind coming as an intern without salary. He said, I don't pay, but I want to just get the hang of the company. 
definitely you know my president got impressed he called him and after some time he hired him later on he did well not only hired him but he sponsored him for the pr so this is this, the the cold call the, the consultancy project that i got for an israeli multinational was also through a cold calling when i was in israel to visit my parents i called this company and when they came to know about uh, me they called me for a meeting and finally they gave me a contract later to uh, uh, form a, a manufacturing unit in india so cold calling is 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 one of the things where uh, uh, you can get your foot in very important it comes on the top second equally important is networking don't miss an opportunity to network whether it is social networking or professional networking going for seminars going for career fairs going for parties if you have a chance to meet somebody do uh, you know give your pitch uh, to the person <clears throat> definitely you will meet somebody who can who can take interest in you. for example i knew two people you know in my uh, last few years there was one person who was who was uh, uh, a masters in computer science and he uh, he wanted to uh, uh, he was not getting a job he was in a call center and he almost wanted to go back to india so once i was going for a for a dinner party and i was passing his house i said why don't you and your wife come with me you know and maybe introduce you to somebody here so we went for the dinner party and i went from table to table introducing this guy and his wife at one table one person literally said that today my uh, accounts clerk left and i'm looking for a accounts payable person his wife was in mcom he gave his card and i helped the wife to form a resume and she got a job networking okay very important second networking you can do is on linkedin linkedin create a good profile professional profile good picture you know not a picture with a t-shirt not a picture with a ball cap and uh, get noticed on, on linkedin try to comment try to post uh, 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 articles get noticed grow your network you already know who are the key people in your company in your industry you know so you already have so you have to grow your network try to get more connections now the trick for getting connections you don't message somebody uh, of course no dear you say hi here i want to connect with you no i would begin like this hi uh, john this is Ab this is abraham i see that we both have a lot of things in common we are from the same industry the same same expertise and i think it's a good opportunity for us to network hence this invite for connection to connect you know it makes it more professional so this is one way of increasing your definitely he will connect with you so grow your connections get notice on linkedin i got notice on linkedin by a government accredited uh, head hunter in ottawa once so you can get uh, get notice so this this uh, networking and uh, thing is uh, 80% of jobs are filled like this and then then, then there are 20 to 25% jobs are filled by job vacancies where you uh, you have to create your profile in a job site you have to uh, post your professional resume with keywords you know so you get they, when people search you they find you and um, uh, and you get jobs posted on your into your inbox by putting the appropriate uh, 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 key search words so this is job begins yeah. of course all all in all you have to have a professional cover letter and a resume then when you are asked to send you have to send it so in short what is a cover letter cover letter again you have to not to forget about the indian style it has to be a canadian style cover letter cannot be more than one page cover letter talks only about the future always what you will do if you are hired what you can do what you can achieve in this position this is what is in short a cover letter now cover letter will decide whether the reader wants to see your resume if he's not impressed with the cover letter he won't see your resume if he's impressed he'll go to the resume resume is the opposite is the past tense maximum two pages what you did in the past what you achieved quantification i increased sales by changing the product mix i implemented an erp whereby the efficiency is improved you know past tense 
So once a resume, you like the resume, you know, he's going to call you either for a, for a telephone interview or a virtual AI interview or in-person interview. So step by step, you are, you are going forward. Of course, the resume has to be tailored to job description as, as Pachal said, just to cover every point of the job description. If he wants to see you or telephone interview, he may say, Ashok, uh, what is the best time to call you or never dictate. You tell him uh, whatever suits you is okay with me. That is the way you should. You go, no, I'm not free on Monday. Call me, I'm free on, no. Whatever suits you is okay with me. <clears throat> so telephone interview, of course, you know, the manners, no interruption. When there is a pause, only then you have to talk. And nowadays there is a lot of uh, AI interviews. You know, like the computer interviews you. There's nobody at the, on, the, on the other side. There are cameras which are uh, assessing your body language, your lot of algorithms at play. You know, the question comes on the screen. You answer, the camera is watching you. And you can't go back to the, after you finish the first question, you have to answer within two minutes, three minutes. And then you are being assessed. You can't go back. So there is a, a new trend for interviews. And then there's in-person interviews where, uh, where you know, people finalize or they want to, you to meet the higher bosses and negotiation, things like that. So st step by step, you go to the last step when you get hired. I want to conclude, very important, I think this according to me, by this following three, four points. The most important question at the interview is always, seven out of 10, they will ask you, please tell us something about yourself. Abraham, Abraham Ji. Yeah, uh, we are on time, so can you please spend a minute or two only? Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. So, the, so when you, when they ask you to talk about yourself, don't repeat the whole resume. They have the resume. You have to you have to talk about what you did, what you did, what you achieved, and how you can link the first two to the job in hand. That is what elevator pitch means. You have to, in one minute, as the elevator goes from ground floor to 20th floor, you have to, don't repeat the resume. Social media footprint, please be careful. At interview, remember, when you're asked to wait, the receptionist and the cameras, they are watching you. So they are watching your body language. They are also hiring managers. And of course, uh, last but not the least, you know, when you don't hear from the hiring manager, uh, when you send your resume, uh, after three weeks, ask him, that, did, did you have a chance to look at my resume? Uh, after finishing an interview, don't forget to thank him for the time and tell him that, okay, uh, uh, if any questions, I'm further, I'm ready to answer them. And this is what I missed yesterday. This is what I want to say. So these are the few basic tips that I want to give newcomers. And sometimes, you know, uh, uh, it helps. It just helped me, you know, and uh, uh, success came. So I wish everybody good luck. And uh, further workshops can be uh, can be arranged by the board, and where we can go, I can go into details. Thank you very much. Thanks, Abraham Ji, for sharing great insights. I'm sure this will benefit a lot to our members. Now it's time for the group photo. So everybody, please switch on your camera, and we'll take a group photo now. Please don't drop off. We are taking the photo. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just take one more. I'm going to put spotlight for Pranjal and uh, um, Abramji. Perfect. Hello, Anjali. Anjali, one, one minute. Anjali, yeah, uh, is it possible for you to quickly put those three slides on the screen, the, the flow chart which I made? Abraham is it possible? Uh, actually, we are already over time. So... Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. But, okay. but I, I can add that. Uh, so we created those slides, Abramji, and we can probably uh, put it on the yeah, please, website please. also. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah, that, summarizes the, that summarizes the whole talk and it's a flow chart. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Well done. 
So, I mean, this is the end of the video. I mean, unfortunately, Tarunji is, oh, Tarunji, I can see you. So, can you show, are you okay? Can you speak? Ashish, have you taken the photo? Yes. Okay, perfect. Actually, I'm using my, I'm using my, I'm using my, so your voice is getting a little echo, Tarunji. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, much better. Okay, I cannot hear anybody else, but yes, if you can hear me, that's great. <laughs> that's why it is. Okay, anyway, uh, the, I would like to uh, thank everyone for being here today. Uh, my name is Tarun Vasudeva and I'm VP Admin in ITAC. It's my honor to give a word of thanks today. Uh, thank you, all of our guests, uh, the speakers, Pranjul Singh and uh, Abraham Samson for an excellent session. And I would like to thank Ashish Bhatia, uh, VP IFI, Anjali Yadav, Director IFI, all board members, and uh, all the volunteers who worked really hard to make it a successful event today. And again, thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tarunji. Thanks, everybody, for joining. On, on this Sunday, and again, special thanks to Pranjal and Abhamji. So, thank you. We're going to end this session now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.